Welcome to the first of a series of Roland XP80 Music Workstation videos. Uh, this, of course, is new for me, uh, a little bit different. Normally you see me bringing in a synth that's been beaten up and I rebuild it, uh, clean it up, whatever. In this case, what we're dealing with is a synth that uh, I actually got uh, for different purposes. It's actually in fully functional condition when I got it and didn't have any of this Velcro on it. Why is there Velcro on it now? I mean, typically you see me take these things and clean the Velcro off to make them as pretty as possible. Well, there's Velcro on it right now purely for the main reason that I use this one for gigs. It's a great, great keyboard for, uh, you know, MIDI performance. You've got a big wide keyboard. It's got some fantastic zoning. It's got a lot of features I really like about it. Plus it has a 64 voice uh, XP, XV, you know, style engine inside. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> it's technically a JV engine, but the JV engine and the XV engine, aside from some Cosm effects, uh, don't really... and the number of effects you can apply on multis. There's, there's upgrades for sure, but to be honest with you, if you just like the sound, it's pretty much the same in all of them, in my opinion. Just my call on that one. But uh, I'm digressing. These pads are so that I can mount external synthesizers. I put a, a Virus TI Snow over here, and I put a Waldorf Blofeld over here. But that's not the reason why I'm doing this video. I'm not here to brag about this keyboard. We're going to do some serious rework to it. We're going to do some very cool upgrades. You might want to call this the Pimp My XP80 video series, if you like, because I'm going to customize this guy to really turbocharge it for what I want to do with it. So first of which, let's turn it on and we'll start in on some of the things it needs improved. What's that sound? Ah, uh, one of those. Okay, now I already knew that was there. I'm just acting for you. But the bottom line is, is this is a floppy disk. And, uh, you know, you never know when those things are going to fail. They're old, they're clunky, and your friends laugh at you. If you're a gearhead like I am, it's embarrassing to be seen with a floppy drive on your keyboard. So, what do we do? Well, let's see. First of all, does it work? There's the load menu. Let me see if can you see that? Yeah, there's the load menu like that. And uh enter. And sure. It's got songs, it's got I can see that my uh camera's autofocus is gonna have issues with this. Okay, it's got songs, it's got tr uh, it can load sounds, and it can load other things too. But as you can see, we've got tracks, sounds, and it can even load Super MRC discs, which is cool because I actually have an old MC500, and back when I was a young guy, I used to use that for every single gig for, what, four years, and I played six nights a week. Um, it was a long time, got in lots and lots of stages, never let me down, fantastic sequencer. I've already ported all my sequences beyond into MIDI files, and then I've been on Sonar now for probably, I guess, about eight years, but... Um, that's notwithstanding. It would be really cool to have a, a live performance sequencer I could rely on that used the kind of format of uh, sequences that I am used to, to using. And actually, if you do on on the fly editing, it's a system you're used to. So this all makes a lot of sense for me. But the first thing we got to do is get rid of this floppy, and we're going to replace it with none other than the all important and newly reconstituted. This is in a separate video I put this together, but here it is. Dun, da, da, da. This is a GoTech USB floppy emulator. Ha! That's the secret surprise here on this particular video. So this GoTech uh, has been painted black because they come sort of PC beige. And more importantly, I put a uh, enable switch in. If you want to see the video for that, it's a separate series of videos for how I, how I made it. Uh, all you need to know is this allows us to have up to a hundred virtual floppies. How cool is that on one USB key? And it's a market improvement over this <laughs> old school. I guess if you're a hipster this might be kind of funky to have on your synth. But uh, I'll actually show you when all is said and done how we can even have this capability without sacrificing anything. But first we got to get this old drive out and get started. <laughs> 